I know that some of you have been struggling with the marketing side of things and uh, you have requested this extra special video. So basically, here it is. So I'm just going to be going through um, a, just a ridiculous number of um, marketing ideas basically for your business. Um, hopefully, um, I'm not entirely convinced the live, is, the live stream is actually coming through okay. So you're just going to have to listen to this for the time being. And then uh, afterwards, I'll upload it into the portal with the slide deck so it will kind of make sense and also a downloadable PDF. But for now, you can just listen stuff, uh, listen, listen to me kind of talk through it. So first of all, I want to give you um, a bit of a background uh, about kind of marketing without going into like marketing theory and anything too kind of deep and complex. Um, but basically, there's a couple of things that are really important before you get stuck into this video. So the first thing is you need to lay a brick a day. Um, imperfect action every day beats perfection every time. So if you're procrastinating over what marketing you should be doing, it's normally because you think you need the perfect solution, whereas you don't. And remember that Rome wasn't built in a day. It's not like we just go out and build a house. We literally have to lay lay the foundations, lay it brick by brick by brick, brick wait for everything to dry, put some plaster on it, put a roof on it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. Um, it's really important that you set up tools reminders and notifications. Um, essentially, what you need to do is make a plan for marketing, write it down somewhere that somewhere and then use tools to remind you what activities you should be doing and when. Marketing is so complicated. There are so many things that you can be doing on a regular basis that you do need these reminders in place in order to make sure that you're doing this stuff regularly, okay? Um, marketing is mostly down to trial and error. I'm not going to lie. Um, occasionally, you'll find people, if, you, if your offer is fairly normal, standard, I'm doing bunny ears there, then you will find that um, there will be experts out there who can launch and market your product for you, uh, which is one option, because they've already practiced it um, uh, with, you know, with other people in similar businesses to your own. Okay? Most of the clients that I end up working with are pretty bootstrapped. In fact, most businesses, I'd say 99% of businesses are bootstrapped and don't have loads of cash to throw at consultants. Okay. So a lot of this stuff you can do for yourself, but there is a process of trial and error. And also what works for me isn't necessarily going to work for you. It is your responsibility to go out and find the things that are going to work for you. Now, most people, when they're getting stuck into marketing, are searching for this thing called unicorn marketing, this one thing, this silver bullet, which is going to transform their business um, and get them all of the leads. But fundamentally, you've got to get out there and find it. It's, it's, a, it's like a hunt. You've got to go hunting for the unicorn. Um, it, and we do this through that process of trial and error. And you'll try stuff, try stuff, try stuff, like one in a hundred things or one, you know, there'll be one, two or three things that you find that work incredibly well for your business. Okay. There might be a few more, you know, I've, I've got um, speaking engagements, podcast interviews, and my books, they work incredibly well for me in terms of generating leads. Since then, I've also discovered like if I double down on my video content, if I'm writing blogs regularly, if I'm engaging on social media, those things will help to bolster it. Okay. Um, but there is really actually kind of no one thing, which is I get all of my leads from. I, again, I get some leads from Facebook ads. I get referrals. So I've got stuff kind of coming in from lots of different places, but it's taken time to build all of those assets up. Basically, if you're searching for that unicorn, okay, and you think that the next thing you try is the one thing that's going to work, and you're not willing to put in the time or effort to do the trial and error, like you might as well just walk away now because I actually feel that marketing is harder than it's ever been in some respects equally like when you if you approach it with the mindset that actually marketing is quite hard and i've got a trial and error on my, my way to success all of a sudden marketing becomes easier because you'll start spotting the things that work and it's not like one there's going to be one thing that's going to generate thousands of leads for you or hundreds of inquiries okay there'll be there might be one thing which kind of generates like maybe a few more leads than the last thing you tried so iterate on that improve that and make it better okay Basically, if you commit to making these changes, doing marketing activities regularly, then you will start to get results from it, okay? Um, the key thing is, though, that if you kind of do nothing 
then you're never going to know what works and what doesn't work from a, a marketing perspective for your business. All right. So the key thing is you need to be doing something. Don't just sit there and wait for a marketing guru to tell you what you should be doing. Just get out there and try some stuff. I'm going to help you along the way. Okay. I've created 70 something things in this slide deck that uh, you could potentially try in order to start um, raising brand awareness, getting your name out there and um, starting to improve uh, your, your marketing and, um, and hopefully start to generate some interest and some leads and things like that for your business. Okay. So a quick thing, if you're, if you're listening to this on uh, Facebook, just click on the video and then it'll actually update the slides for you. That's pretty cool. I didn't realize you could do that. Right. Um, anyway, where were we? Okay. So here we go. 70 something things that you could try and your business from a marketing perspective. Okay. Some of these now we've, we've obviously, I've given you some tips and hints around Facebook organic, but I'm going to dive just a, a couple of these things will kind of remind you about some of the things you should be doing. So first and foremost, make sure you're doing Facebook organic. You should be making a plan to log in daily and do stuff in there. I have all of these other things which generate leads for me on a relatively passive way in a relatively passive way. Yet I still have to go in frequently and top up my Facebook organic. I haven't done any for a while, so I need to go in there and probably just uh, do a couple of posts on my personal timeline, poke the bear a little bit, um, you know, and start to generate and start some conversations that way. Uh, Cause things have got a little bit quiet at the moment. Um, I'm no different to you. I'm not immune to like um, having like, I'm not immune to marketing. If that makes sense, I need to do marketing too. Okay, so do Facebook organic. Also, make sure you've got a Facebook group set up. Make sure you've got a Facebook page set up. Okay, um, I would, um, I'm not going to go through the process of setting up each of these. I've got 70 plus things to go through. So I'm just giving you ideas of things that you need to be focusing on. And what I would do is I'd almost have a checklist. Uh, in fact, maybe I should make a checklist. But you should have a checklist of things that you go through and rate like on a regular basis, a monthly or quarterly basis. Make sure your Facebook group's up to date. Make sure your Facebook page is up to date. Make sure that you've got the same logo and they're all consistent across all different social media channels and things like that, okay? Um, uh, but at the very least, you should have these two things set up so that you've got somewhere for people to go, like a community of, for people to go into and also a page for people to follow you on. And also you might wanna start thinking about trying Facebook ads, okay? I talked to you about um, Facebook insights, um, uh, audience insights which is a tool within ads manager you can see the link down in the bottom right hand corner here business.facebook.com forward slash ads manager don't use the boost button please make sure you're using the ads manager tool go and check out audience insights and maybe have a tinker and a play um, i am going to be producing um, some facebook ads content but if you want to know more in the portal there is a facebook ads for events um, section which kind of gives, starts to give you a bit of an intro introducer uh, an introduction into Facebook ads. Okay. But, um, so, but a combination on Facebook of doing groups, pages and ads, um, is really powerful. So those are the first four things that I'd recommend. So if you didn't catch that Facebook organic on your personal timeline, Facebook groups, Facebook pages and ads manager. Okay. Next up, we're going to get into blogging. This is something that, um, you can get other people to do. Now I've, um, uh, shortcutted this shortcut this process um, myself um, and I don't mind admitting this so I've got about 150 blog articles a majority of them were written by um, a lovely guy who I found on fiverr.com okay so I, I gave him the topics that I wanted them to write about and I'm happy to share that who this chap is uh, if you ask me nicely um, for five bucks I was getting blogs written so if you imagine like writing five articles or writing a blog a day, so that's for the five de working days in a week, okay? Times that by 4.2 weeks a month, that's $100 a month, you could have 20 blog articles a month going out. And I did this, worked really well, and it gives you the baseline content, okay? Um, what I would suggest you then do is um, start up a spreadsheet. If you, wanna, if you wanna start to work out what content to write about, open up a spreadsheet, put a different category as a heading in each column, like minimum of five of them. So you might say, for me, I write about marketing, pricing, product, sales, and something else, okay? So you put those headings in there, and then for each one of those headings, um, you want to write down 20 articles for each category, okay? So that gives you 100 blog, blog articles. 
if you're stuck for ideas, jump onto or go and download, buy a book called They Ask, You Answer. It is one of the best content marketing books out there. And he gives you some great techniques on how to come up with blog article titles, okay? But this is about planning people. You just gotta plan this stuff. Open up a spreadsheet, start planning some content, okay? And you could also jump onto Ripley, uh, so ry.ly for some inspiration. So you can plug in like business coaching and it'll give you a whole load of suggestions of things that people are actually searching for on Google basically. So, um, and, and you can then use those things that people are searching for as ideas for article titles. And knock out up to 500 words. Make sure you include an image. You can get free images from Pexels or Pixabay. Okay, uh, so copyright free images from Pexels or Pixabay. Sometimes they want you just to put a link back to um, where you downloaded the image from as well. Um, and just make sure at the end of the article you include a call to action. That's what CTA stands for. Um, one of the other things you can also do is contribute to other people's blogs. Um, so it doesn't just have to be about your blog. You could also um, go and hunt out other blogs and, and ask people, do you, is it okay? You know, if you, if you know that somebody's getting a lot of traffic to their website, uh, just send them a quick email. Hey, I'm just wondering whether you're looking for contributions to your, to your blog. Um, there are lots of like big like entrepreneur um, magazine and um, Inc magazine and stuff like that. They all take guests. Um, uh, contributions, Huffington Post and stuff like that. Um, that's kind of in the Premier League of blogs. Um, there'll be others out there as well. That, um, so I would shoot for some of those, definitely, because you're experts and you're, uh, with what you're doing, but also like reach out to other people who are blogging and say, look, would you like me to contribute? All I'd ask for is you know, um, uh, a link back to my website, if that's okay. One of the other things you could also do is get other guests, other, like invite other people to contribute to your blog. So if you're getting some traffic and maybe struggling to write your own content, invite others to write content for you, for your blog. Obviously you want to attribute them, give them a link back to their website. Um, again, I've, I've had probably, probably about 60, 60 articles on my website are contributions from other people, okay? And all that does is it just helps to drive traffic to my website, right? And I don't have to, all I've got to do is cut and paste their article, nice and easy. So that's all blogging stuff. Uh, then we move on to something which I have kind of called social blogging, but it's not, um, it's slightly different. So um, basically what you want to do is, is within each article, take the five key themes in that blog toast and turn them into bite-sized chunks that you can then reuse in social media. Okay. Um, pop these snippets, these little five um, key themes or snippets into an Excel spreadsheet and start to build out a content library. And you'll see, I've just put in a little example here. Um, where you've got the, the platform that you're going to post onto, maybe the post that you're going to put out there, the link back to the article so it's relevant, what hashtags um, are relevant to that snippet that you're going to be posting, and maybe what you also want to do is, is tag some, there's some at tags in there, I haven't put any in this, this particular bit, but um, you also want to tag some other people in. Now you can set up some automation, I'm going to talk about automations later, you can set up some automations, but with, with automation, sometimes the tagging doesn't work. It's just something to bear in mind, okay? Um, but you wanna make sure you've got hashtags tag, uh, and tags in there and posts and things like that, just to make sure that the posts are relevant. But you could take a blog article and turn it into five posts on social media, and this just kind of keeps you busy, okay? So I'm gonna talk about like what, what you, once you've built your content library, what you then could potentially do with it a bit later on um, using some automation tools. Right, next up is video. So one of the things I'd recommend you do, if you've got no content out there, I've got a shit ton of content, so I, I can, I've got no excuses not to do, produce more content, but equally I can rest on my laurels a little bit because I've got 150 videos on YouTube, countless videos on, on Facebook and my other social media channels. I've done all of the blogs, I've got books out, okay? It doesn't mean to say I can't stop marketing, right? But I do have a certain, like, I've got so many assets built this is less important for me. For you, this is gonna be super important. And one of the things that I would recommend you get into the habit of doing is producing content on a daily basis. I don't care, like lay a brick a day, I don't care how small it is, how insignificant you feel it is, but produce some content every single day, whether it's a social media post or a video or a blog article or a whatever it might be. Like do something daily, it is super, super important. If you can, even if it's just for 30 days or 20 days, seven days, five days, don't care. 
commit to doing a Facebook Live each day, whether that's in your group, your page, in your, in, your, in your own stream or in somebody else's group, don't care. Commit to doing a Facebook Live each day because this content is invaluable, okay? Keep it simple. Make sure you do it on your phone and save, this is super important, save the video to your phone. If you can, the HD version because you're gonna repurpose that video and once you've created your YouTube channel, you're going to upload these Facebook lives onto your YouTube channel and you're going to be prolific. Set yourself a ridiculous target, right? I've set myself a target uh, or I did to get a hundred blog articles done, to get a hundred videos into my YouTube channels, to get a hundred um, podcast interviews done. When I've covered off a hundred, I'll go back through them and go, right now I need to have a thousand blog articles. I need to have a thousand videos on my, my YouTube channel. I need to have a thousand podcast interviews live, okay? Because imagine if you're then 10xing every resource that you've got, but start with 10 on each platform, move up to 50 on each platform, move up to 100 on each platform, move up to 1,000 on each platform, and keep going with it. So take your live video, repurpose it, save it, upload it into your YouTube channel, okay? Super important. Um, download a little app or sign up to a little app called TubeBuddy. So this is what we call a browser plugin. So you'll upload the videos using Chrome or whatever it is. And then um, TubeBuddy gives you loads of handy tips on how to optimize your video, okay? So it tells you to um, uh, what tags to use, um, how long your description should be. Um, do make sure you put some links back to your website and also add a custom thumbnail with the right text embedded within the image, okay? You'll see some of these images which I've created here with text on them. So Google, biggest search engine um, in its image search, pick, picks up the text within images to so make it relevant. If you put too much text in there, it gets watered down, okay? There's another handy little tip as well. Use keywords everywhere. So keywords everywhere is, again, another little browser plugin, but that shows you what keywords people are searching for that are relevant to the search term you put into Google and, and ergo YouTube. So it means that whatever keywords uh, you use in the titles for your videos are relevant, okay? So down, if you're gonna do video, get your YouTube channel set up, download TubeBuddy and keywords everywhere, and then make sure you optimize your videos and get prolific. Just upload those. Those videos don't have to be perfect. The first videos I did for online business startup when I launched that book are terrible, but I still get some really lovely positive comments like on a fairly regular basis of people saying, thanks, the content's great. So thankfully the content is great, but the production is pretty terrible. <laughs> okay. Uh, right. So a couple of other things you can do. So I'm a big fan of repurposing content. So we've actually now gone through and we've repurposed Facebook a Facebook Live into a YouTube video, which we've then optimized. You're then going to um, get a rev.com account and have those videos transcribed. It does cost a dollar a minute, but if you've got a five minute video, it's only five bucks. If you've got a 10 minute video, it's only 10 bucks. But this will save you a massive amount of time because what you can then do is going back to like five slides, repurpose those transcriptions, rewrite them, and turn them into blog articles. Okay. You can then embed your YouTube video into that blog article that you've now uploaded, which creates rich content on your website, which Google loves, okay? And then um, what you can also download from rev.com is something called a caption file. And you wanna make sure that that caption file is either automatically uploaded to your YouTube channel, or you make sure you get log back into your YouTube account and upload those, um, the caption file, okay? And then basically, like I said, repeat steps five to 10. 12 when I went through tips 5 to 12 with the blogging like just it's like produce video content repurpose it produce video content repurpose it like if you did one video a week that's 50 50 videos and 50 blog articles that you could have uploaded plus if you then take out the five snippets that's 250 250 social media posts that you could create through producing just one video a week okay so maybe I need to do a little challenge. In fact, I'm going to do a little challenge uh, as a side note to this, okay? Um, next up, journalist requests, okay? So um, check out uh, two sites which I like um, and use fairly frequently. Again, this is something I, I need to double down on. I haven't done enough of this. No, I'm, I'm not immune to like um, bouts of stupidity and ignoring the obvious, but helperreporter.com and journo requests are two amazing sources. So these are journalists and bloggers and people like that who are searching for business owners to um, contribute content for their articles, interviews, um, and things like that, okay? They're looking for source material. They're looking for experts just like you, okay? So make sure you register for an account with both of those. 
with both sites. Make sure you sign up to get the daily notifications from both sites. Help uh, journal requests is once a day. Help a reporter, uh, you get updates two to three times a day, especially from a business perspective. Um, and make sure you pay attention to those. Just pick out an article. Like I said, you could use that as a source. So you could, you could say, like, see something and help a reporter go, oh, that's, that's in my niche. Do a quick Facebook Live about it, a five minute video, fire it off to rev.com, take the transcription, cut and paste that in a blog article, but also cut and paste it into that Hero um, Helper Reporter request, kill two birds with one stone. So if you get clever at this, you can save yourself an awful lot of time and bother. Um, so basically, yep, yeah, just read the summary um, email which comes through, respond to any requests that are appropriate. Also, this might trigger some ideas for things that if, the, if there are other journalists like requesting the stuff, your local press might be interested in it. So um, do lean in and speak to um, your local newspapers, radio stations and things like that. Maybe news channels, depends on how newsworthy it is, um, and uh, offer content to them. Um, I've had leads from these. OK, it's really important. Um, and also what you tend to get with these is backlinks to your website. OK. Moving on, podcasts. Uh, this is quite a big thing, okay? Um, I put off doing my podcast for a while until I was mentally in the right place to do it because it is a bit of commitment, especially if you want to um, kind of things to be perfect, especially when it comes to media like I do. So podcast, I was kind of like, well, A, it takes time to put the content together. B, it also then takes time to um, uh, post, edit it, upload it, get the show notes ready and all that sort of stuff. But... There's a great tool called anchor.fm, which um, basically like shortcuts that entire process, makes the whole thing super simple and uh, automatically pushes the content up to iTunes, Google Podcasts and seven other channels for you. Um, and it's, it's just, you can, you, there's an app on your phone so you can be on the move, like with your headphones plugged into a quick five or 10 minute podcast thing and push it off. And then you go, you've got more content live. Again, you could potentially download that recording, get it transcribed, turn that into a blog article um etc etc you could um take strip out the audio from videos which you produced and upload those as um uh upload those as podcast episodes as well again that's actually given me an idea because i haven't done enough of that um if you interview people so if you have your own podcast and you interview people uh it's more than likely they're going to share that podcast with their network which raises your brand awareness gets your name out there and positions you as an expert and the other thing which you could do also is reach out to other podcast hosts and um, just check and see whether, like, put yourself forward as a guest. Now, most pod podcast hosts do want something of substance. So they will typically ask you, well, have you got a giveaway? So you've got to make, you know, if, if you've got lead magnets or a book written or something considerable that you can give away as an incentive on, on their podcast, they really like that sort of thing. If you don't have those lead magnets or marketing assets built yet, this might not be the best approach because um, you know, you, you've got to have like a, a big following yourself. You've got to have those free giveaways. You've got to have something of substance, something substantial to offer. Okay. It's just something to bear in mind, but, but you will probably be able to get, um, get guest interviews if you reach out to enough podcast hosts. So jump onto LinkedIn. You can do a quick search for um, podcast hosts and you get a whole list of podcast hosts on there. Okay. Uh, speaking opportunities, a great way to um, raise your brand awareness and start the conversation with people. Um, I think I, I checked in Gloucestershire alone. There's something like 167 different um, local networking groups out there who are running meetings regularly and they're all interested in getting, um, uh, speakers, professional speakers along, or unprofessional speakers along, that's why you get me along. <laughs> uh, getting um, speakers along to um, to guest on, uh, to be a guest speaker at their networking group, okay? So, but you do have to, I've found that you do have to be fairly persistent. Um, you can also burn yourself out. I think um, when I first started my coaching practice and I was kind of just bootstrapping everything, I did about 60 speaking gigs in a year and I was, I was fried. I was like worn out. So just be wary of like the amount of energy it takes because they expect you to help with the marketing. You've got to drive to and from the speaking gigs. It does start a lot of conversations. You'll end up like burning yourself out with doing tons of consultations. So just make sure you're kind of like mentally ready for it because it is a bit, can be a bit of a roller coaster. If, if people aren't, being receptive to you speaking get a friend within that network to refer you okay 
Um, also look for conferences and events locally, but also on Eventbrite, which might present suitable opportunities for you to speak at. Um, and failing that, like if all else fails, like put on your own local events, find you can you can go into there are tons of like event venues put on smaller and i'm talking about like it doesn't have to be for like 100 people or 500 people it could be for five people or 10 people okay you can use eventbrite so you can use marketing platforms like eventbrite facebook ads or linkedin linkedin events facebook events that sort of thing to help you to promote your small local event um and um, just get five or 10 people in a room together. Like you might have to pay out a little bit for coffees, teas, room hire, that sort of thing. But reality is um, like, if you can't get booked as a speaker, like put your own events on. And like, again, this is how I started. This is how I, when I set up Stroudnet, um, I couldn't get any local, any speaking gigs. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll put on my own event and put myself on as the headline act. Lo and behold, from that one event, I got invited to speak at four other events. When I spoke at those four events, I got invited to speak at more events. Now I've got the assets. So I filmed those. I've got recordings from it. Um, I have a speaker one sheet. So I've got a speaker page on my website. I've got built up all of those assets. So people can hunt me down, see that I'm a speaker and book me. Okay. But you've got to start somewhere. This is all about starting. Okay. Starting to build those assets. Um, I've done tons of speaking, uh, tons. A dozen, I've spoken a dozen times at local colleges and universities and schools. Um, they're always on the lookout for experts and, and people to inspire the students. So reach out to your local university and see if, um, like, and don't just go for one faculty, go for different faculties in the university. Um, you know, if the marketing one doesn't want you, go to the, go to the business one. If the business one doesn't want you, go to the psychology one. If the psychology one doesn't, it's, et cetera, okay? So try lots of different um, avenues, okay? But it's about being persistent. Uh, one of the other things that I think a lot of people overlook is old clients and old prospects that you've got in your list. So some, you know, people who um, have already bought from you are 15 times more likely to buy from you once they've already bought from you. So reaching out to old prospects, old clients is like a really good way of reigniting that relationship and getting them back into your business. Um, what you should also do is have like a follow-up sequence. So you should follow up five plus times with previous clients or prospects, okay? Don't just take it as given that you reach out to them once and they go, oh no, it, it's not. Because it might not be right for them now, but if several months down the line, they still, they're still having the same challenges, they're like, yeah, okay, now I'm ready to lean in. So you've got to keep on, keep a list and keep on following up, okay? To just check in with them, see how they're getting on. It doesn't have to be like a hard sales pitch or anything like that. Um, just keep on checking in with them um, and see, see, see how they're getting on basically. Um, because fundamentally, um, like if you don't do this stuff, you're not going to know. Okay. Put reminders in to do this stuff. So I used Todoist, um, to put a daily reminder in to tell me to check in Sightly within in Sightly, I've got a list of tasks, which pop up automatically. Um, and that basically, so when I, when I do a consultation, it autom it's, it creates five tasks and it says, uh, like after, um, one day send them a gift after seven days do a follow-up email like follow-up email or call uh and then like five more follow-ups after that three six nine months twelve months etc so put reminders in to do this stuff i used to do it and i have in Sightly as my crm but you could use to do it in a spreadsheet like keep track of this stuff in the spreadsheet the follow-up sequence um i use Insightly because i use it for other automations as well but um you could just use a spreadsheet it doesn't have to be complicated uh, what else? Uh, social media. So you should be posting on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google My Business, your Facebook page, Facebook groups, as regularly and as often as you possibly can. Um, and if you're stuck with what to post, um, I talked about a content library earlier on. So dive into your content library and just post something. There's, like posting something, even if you think it's daft, stupid, whatever, not great quality content, is better than posting nothing at all, okay? Um, and get to do is to remind you to do this stuff. Okay. So I, ha I have reminders to, um, for the really important stuff, log into my fearless business Academy open group on a daily basis, uh, to check in with the, the paid members group as well. Um, plus, uh, like post in LinkedIn weekly, make sure you send out an email newsletter. So I've got, I've got reminders to do like the most important stuff, but you can chuck a whole load of reminders into to do on a daily basis, like at a really micro level. So get to do is to automate it. So, which brings me on to the automation stuff. Okay. Use a tool like buffer 
to automate your content across all of your social media channels. Okay, this is super, super important. Um, um, because like you're only human and sometimes actually it's better to like double down, like spend a day planning out your content, creating a whole load of posts and then just schedule it and buffer. And then you can rest assured that you know that you've got content planned out for a number of weeks or even months into the future. Okay. Also you can use tools like, um, deliver it, um, which you can upload your like RSS feed. So if you create a podcast, upload the podcast RSS feed into there or your blog RSS feed, um, or video RSS feeds into deliver it and it will automatically post out to various different places like Google my business and stuff like that Okay, so have a quick look at deliver it and there are other kind of like RSS syndication tools out there as well um, Also, we talked about repurposing content um, Medium is a is a great um, App it unfortunately. It's just an app that you can use on your phone. I think there is a desktop version of it as well like um, worthwhile but the desktop version is linked up to facebook so if you're doing this stuff yourself it's okay if you've got a va it's a bit harder because they have to have all your facebook login details but with medium you could just literally just take all of your blog content your videos anything that you produce and upload it into medium and then that's another it's just another channel it's just another way of getting stuff out there and again there'll be a ton of tools like medium so it's worthwhile just doing a bit of research um, and then also what you might want to do is um, use a tool like linked helper to um, help grow for example your LinkedIn connections um, and connect with people and send out messages and stuff like that um, I think I think that there's too much of this stuff going on so just again make sure that what the content you're sending to so if you're sending somebody a message like give them tons of value like give them a reason to want to get back in touch with you put some humor in there um, if you want to know more about like the cold approach that you might choose to use on LinkedIn, I haven't put it into this spread um, PowerPoint, but I'll put it, add it in afterwards. There's a guy called John Buchan who I recently interviewed on my podcast who runs something called the charm offensive. Um, and he's got some great templates in there about how to approach people from cold, like to inject a bit of humor and, um, and, and not like annoy people because there's too much of this like buy my stuff mentality like from a marketing perspective so just don't fall into that trap I think is kind of what I'm saying but I'll upload this PDF and make this available as a download as well for you um, next up um, do make sure that you've got a Google my business account set up set up um, this is absolutely 100% categorically essential most of you are running small local businesses who are listening to this um, so if somebody's putting in like business coach Gloucestershire or business coach Stroud, you want to get found like 80% of traffic is going through Google my business now before it goes to any other channels. It used to be that 80% of traffic would go through Google's organic search before it went to your website. Now it's changed. It's all about Google my business. And, um, quite often people will either, um, like pick up the phone directly and call you, or they'll go to another one of your social channels or something like that. Occasionally they'll go to your website. Website's not as important as it used to. So it's, this isn't just about your website. Make sure that you get your listing verified because um, Google, it, Google Places, Google My Business is all about like being location specific. Um, and uh, also just focus on getting a shit ton of reviews. Like any clients come in, please go and like, make sure you go and get them to leave a review for you. Um, if you Google, uh, Google review link creator or link creation tool. I think it should go to the Google API, like Google backend dashboard. And you can actually, so you can send people di a direct link, um, which opens up your Google, my business page, opens up the review box. And then all somebody has got to do is tap five stars and leave a quick review. Okay. So get your listing verified, make sure you're getting reviews. Also set up Google Analytics on your website. So again, like people do all this marketing stuff, don't track it. So get up, get Google Analytics set up. You could also try um, local Google Ads. So you'll have heard of Google AdWords. Um, if you haven't, if you're not doing Google Ads, um, you can get. I think it's seventy-five pounds free um, uh, in terms of Google advertising spend. So it's worthwhile trying that out. Um, or speak to a local Google Ads expert. Um, you could also get into local directories. So one of the first ones that I recommend, and it's totally free, is Free Index. And again, you want to build up some reviews in this. I think if you search for business coaching on on um, Free Index, I think I'm like number three overall in the country, which is pretty cool. 
uh, with only 16 reviews okay so um, this, this is um, it's a free tool it's like Google my business um, and Google my business also looks at free index in terms of the reviews okay um, also just hunt out other local directories that you can find and ask for a listing on their website so one of the ways to do this is basically um, like uh, so a lot of local business directories also have a Facebook group or a Facebook page. So that would be a good place. So you could search for your town on Facebook and just see what stuff pops up. But also if you do a Google search for like Gloucestershire, local directory Gloucestershire or local directory London or something like that, you'll get a whole plethora of online business directories. And I would just go through and start adding your website onto them. Okay. Um, uh, whatever you do, don't use yell. Okay. Um, because what will happen is, I mean, get the free basic listing, but then if their salespeople start calling you, because they will. And um, personally, I think that their paid for stuff isn't that great. Um, um, so just ignore their salespeople if they call. I mean, get like a, get the free Yell listing. They will call you, but ignore the calls. That's basically what I'm saying. The salespeople are like horrific, proper pressure selling. They're a nuisance. Even if you're there politely saying, look, I'm really sorry, I'm busy. I don't really want to, I'm not interested. They will still try and pressure sell you. It's horrific. It makes me want to go and have a cold shower. Um, also make sure that you're attending local um, networking groups. Um, and also there's quite often local business awards um, or national business awards. So again, make sure that you're entering local business awards, put your name forward or get somebody to nominate you. Um, if you're asking somebody to nominate you, write the nomination for yourself and get them to just cut and paste it into the form, send them a link to the form. Don't expect that this stuff's going to be easy or that you're going to win every award you go into, but you can get some good local press out of it potentially. And also it makes you look good if you're winning awards. Gosh, I'm starting to get a bit weary now. Uh, okay, so I've got a ton of other activities that potentially you could try doing. You could um, start a contest or competition, so which you then promote through social media and things like that. Uh, make it relevant. Make sure the prize is linked to your product or service that you offer. Um, you can create. Um, I'm not a big fan of like discounting stuff, but you could create coupons. Uh, you could find ways of encouraging like referrals by you know giving incentives. Put it this way. If you were to, if you were to um, give a 10 or 20% referral to somebody, like the likelihood is that um, if you had to go out and find those clients without, getting, without giving away like that 10 or 20% referral fee, you'd probably be spending that money on some other form of advertising. Okay, so monetary incentives are quite powerful. The other thing you could do is say, well, look, if you refer people to me, then I'll give you a free coaching session or I'll give you a free thing in, in return for it. It didn't have to be monetary related, okay? You could give away free samples, free coaching sessions, free consultation. You could give away taster sessions, group, um, like group. I, I talked about if running your own events. It could be like a two hour seminar that you put on where, where you um, give people a bit of a taster for what you do. Okay. If you're, if you're short of prospects, this is a great way to drum up business. Okay. Uh, I found that referring business to other people is great because what happens when they get a prospect who wasn't a good fit for their business, they refer them back to you. Okay. So if you refer people, you're more likely to get referrals back. If you keep on referring business and they don't, um, uh, don't repay the favor, stop referring business and find somebody else to refer to who is likely to refer business back to you. Um, you could join accredited or professional bodies. This does cost you money, but they will endorse you and potentially offer you some marketing opportunities on their website and things like that. Um, do you send out gifts to clients or prospects? So I'm a big fan of sending out books, but you could send out birthday cards. Um, you could send out gifts and things like that. Hampers, food. Um, I don't know, any old thing. Um, uh, I, you could also wear a t-shirt with your branding on it. So I've been known uh, up until now, uh, for having my salt rock t-shirts on i've re recently got some fearless business branded t-shirts and i've already had people coming up to me saying that brand is really cool where did you get it and i'm like well it's mine where can i buy it i uh, don't know yet but i'll look into it can i have your details and then the chat's moved on from there that's been a week i've had my t-shirts for a week believe it or not uh you could also donate prizes to local fundraisers or go and volunteer at the local fundraisers go and volunteer for local charities and things like that corporate social responsibility is like such a big thing um and like adding that extra value to the community will pay dividends back in return 
So you could help people in groups on Reddit, Craigslist, Gumtree, various different forums in your niche, like Mumsnet, for example. Like forums are so overlooked, but they're, they're like massive. Uh, my only tip is don't be too salesy in any of these groups, okay? But go and hunt out forums and groups and things like that and start helping people deliver value. That's what this is all about. Facebook groups, Quora, Stumble Upon, Dig, any other online magazine that's out there that's relevant to your niche. Local Chamber of Commerce, offer yourself up there to do clinics and stuff like that. The local growth hub, I didn't put that on there. Um, any other business related organizations locally um, get stuck in. Uh, if there are community boards and local library, for example, and things like that, you could also, like I said, run your own events, but also organize your own meetups on a regular basis. Like you re create your own networking groups, but make it relevant to your niche. Okay. Oh, that was a lot of stuff to go through. Um, like I said, don't panic. Um, I will create a PDF with the slides. So you've got um, almost like a checklist that you can go through and start ticking some of this off. Um, but there's a few things. I just want to finally kind of like finish this up, wrap this up. By saying that, um, um, you know, there's a few things that you've got to remember. Okay. First and foremost, you must, must, must. Marketing isn't just like a one hit wonder. It's not just like a, we're launching Facebook ads and they work and we're tickety boo. It's not just a, like, I'll launch a podcast and that's it, taking care of itself. I'll write a book and get loads of leads, okay? This whole marketing thing in this day and age is about showing up regularly and often with the same consistent message, okay? If you do that, and by that I mean daily, regularly and often with the same consistent message, focusing on the same product, the same niche, the same channels, you will start to win at marketing. You will start to get clients, okay? Guaranteed, okay? I can absolutely 100% guarantee it. The thing is, though, it never gets any easier, okay? You're still going to have to put the same amount of effort in with your marketing, okay? But what happens is you just get better at it, okay? You go a bit faster. You get more efficient at it, okay? You get better at it. Right? It doesn't get any easier, it takes the same amount of effort, but you can squeeze more into the same amount of time because you get better at it. You find better ways of automating it. You, find, you improve your, con your copy so that people engage with it more. So you get better at it over time and that builds momentum. Okay? But you've got to get out there and start practicing it. One of the things I do my, myself personally, I don't really tell others to do this, but this is something which I do, plan to give away three times more value than you would like to get back. Okay. So if I, if I want somebody to invest, I don't know, um, 500 pounds with me, I will find ways of delivering 1500 pounds worth of value back to them. It might be give them my book, give them a free consultation, get them along to one of my events. And, but I'm focused on making sure that their return on the investment in doing those three things produces an extra 1500 pounds worth of revenue for them. Okay. So give away three times more value than you would like to get back. Because if you're helping people to add value to their business or themselves, they're going to, they're going to benefit from that and then reinvest that money back into you. Okay. But you do it abundantly. You don't become a leech. You don't, you like, if they choose not to buy your stuff, fine. That's up entirely up to them. Okay. When you do find your unicorn, because there's every chance that you try all these different things out and you find your one thing that starts to work for you, double down your efforts on that thing, but don't like keep on finding clues and keep on trying different marketing things. Because I know that I would rather have three unicorns working for me rather than just one, okay? So double down, on, double down your efforts on, or double down on that unicorn marketing, but also double down your efforts on finding other marketing things that are going to work for you, okay? Um, now this one's interesting. I want you to decide right now on who the future you is. What does the future you look like? What would the future you in five years time be doing right now? Okay. Because if you're sat there doing nothing, hoping that your business is going to sort itself out and you're going to get clients, the future version of you wouldn't have sat there doing nothing. The future version of you would have been busy doing Facebook posts, setting up a group, doing, you know, writing a book, writing blog articles, doing videos every day. Okay. So if the future, if, if your goal is to grow your consultancy, to grow your coaching practice, to grow your freelancing business, 
and earn a set amount of money, set a, earn a set income, then you know that that future version of you who is earning that income is doing these things on a daily basis. Okay, this is about congruency. So ask yourself this simple question, what is the future version of you doing right now? What would they be doing right now? Okay, in order to get where you want to, to be, where you see yourself in five years time. And you can compare yourself to, like you could ask yourself, um, would, would, um, do you think Richard Branson was sat there on his floor crying, going, I can't do this marketing stuff, it's too hard? No, the guy just got out there and he does marketing. Yeah, he's probably had like the odd down date, we all do, right? But um, if you ask yourself, honestly, would Richard Branson be behaving like this? The answer is probably no. He'd be out there like doing Facebook videos, doing crazy stuff, like to raise his brand awareness and stuff like that. Um, doing some PR stunts and whatnot. Um, and, and that is ultimately why, uh, well, well, it's not, it's not the reason why he's successful. It's one of the reasons why he is successful. Okay. Um, so decide on like, who is the future version of you aligned with? Where are they in their life? How far in the future are they? And what activities would they have done in order to get there? Okay. And make sure that that set of activities matches up with what you're doing right now. Super, super important. Cool. There you go. 70 something ways to market your business. Um, that was a bit crazy. I'm totally worn out. So I'm just going to go now. Um, probably have a glass of wine this evening, I think, and unwind. Uh, like I said, hit me up. I'll, I'll try and put this as a PDF somewhere online. Um, I'll pop it into the show notes, uh, at show notes, um, into the portal. Um, and make that available as a download for you. And um, just shoot me any questions you've got. Like if there's something which resonated, something you want to try, if you've got any questions about it, like um, do ask. I'd be more than happy to answer them. Cool. Uh, right. That's it for now. Um, thank you very much. Take care and good night. <laughs>